beautiful in front of the little inn that they got. They have like a little town. Yeah, sheriff's office, Goldfield Hotel. Hey over there, Joy Lunchbox. And Joy Nightingale. And today we have landed right here in Goldfield, Nevada. Now we have a mission for today. One, we're gonna find a grave with an unusual epitaph. And then we are going to drive over to the international car forest of the last church. And this is a weird sculpture area where they use cars, almost like Cadillac Ranch down in Amarillo, Texas, but to a totally different level. And we're happy to bring you along. Before we do, we're actually gonna walk a little bit around town, see what it's about. And, uh, cause I heard there's actually art cars, not cars that are art in town. Yeah, that sounds cool to me. And hopefully you like this kind of thing. If you do, you should like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, comment down below. Well, it's appreciated, much love. But I think it's time to do it. Step right up, let's go for this ride. Figured, no spot better to start off in front of Goldfield Visitor Center. This town was actually named Grand Pa, which means Great Water, but then it was renamed to Goldfield. Joy, Joy, can we stay tonight? The Milky Way is appearing. Get it appearing nightly because you see it in the sky. On this monument here we have Goldfield, the world's greatest gold camp. And we see the little mine car with the gold ore in top. Right next to the visitor center is a building that looks like there's partially stone, but a chunk of it is a bottle house. Not the whole building. Just near that upper left corner is made of a lot of bottles. I wonder if when this was being built, they weren't planning to use bottles, but then they ran out of building materials and went, we'll just throw those in, it'll work. Cause it did. Cool, I don't know if it's a private residence or a store, but covered in road signs. It says visitors parking, two hour limit, so I guess we could visit it. It's posted on the side of it. When I'm on the road, this is what I am looking for. Look at this, it says Main Street. A weird UFO on the roof. When you hear Joe and Joy have landed, it is a UFO reference. It looks like this might be part of a salvage yard. Mohawk Mining Company, Goldfield. I like when you start seeing little details like there's a lady she's changing in that telephone booth and we have a child skeleton on his swing but he's a little too young but he's underage drinking look atomic duck IPA Unless he just is an adult that likes sitting in little kid swings. Always find some cool stuff. A roll of the devil's rope. A different kind of barbed wire. In fact, it looks like there's a few different kinds of barbed wire wrapping around that roll of barbed wire. Parked our car in what is, looks like Town Square, especially because it says Goldfield Town Square. On the left, we have a community center. Courthouse. Followed by a courthouse. Fire station. And the corner store. Open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., but it looks closed. Like we are saying, we are going to start heading out to the International Car Forest, which cars are used as art, but aren't art cars. But in town itself, we actually have a bunch of art cars. The Goldfield Art Car Park was the idea of Goldfield residents and art car owner Slim Sims. After the city of Reno impounded the moving art of art car artist Robert Rocket Bob in 2001. So here we actually have labeled with the Cool sign and arrow point down, Goldfields Art Cars. You gotta love when you take a station wagon. It almost looks 
prehistoric like a dinosaur, like it triceratops, like it has horns, but they actually put a Volkswagen Beetle on the top and a bunch of Santa figures. You can see everything that is used to make it up. Little poker chips, some Barbie dolls, tops of soda cans. Do you think you have to enter your password to get into the car? Now you might be saying, a Volkswagen Beetle on top of station wagon, that's crazy. They don't just have one. We also have a Volkswagen Beetle on top of a minivan that has a Minnie Mouse cake pan on the back of that Volkswagen Beetle. And, and this one I might be my favorite. This was Rocket Bob's, it's on the mailbox. A boat bolted on top of this car. Some rubber duckies. You're saying to yourself right now, is driving an art car dangerous? Well, you might need to be brave, just like Evil Knievel sitting in the front holding on to those horns. Whenever I see art cars, it makes me think of like Mad Max. I can see people like building these survival vehicles, traveling down the roads. Art car trailer. I wonder if this went with the first car we showed you because it's covered in more of those Santas as well. Little dolls, they're cute when they give them to your kids. You leave them in the sun for a few years and boy do they get creepy. There's many things as me and Joy go to these mining towns, desert towns, that I think we're gonna see. Donkeys are always a pleasant treat, but you could expect to see donkeys. Not every town, but I'm not surprised when I do see one. Lots of sand and dirt and rocks, not surprised. Stuff about mining, not surprised. But entrances to a subway station in the middle of nowhere, this surprises me. I don't know why they exist, but sitting here, Reminds me, just like in New York City, that these would be blocking the staircases down to a local subway station. They don't have an elevated train that this would be on a platform. Why are these here? How did they get here? Where were they from? These are questions I wish I had the answers for. Fire station number one and probably only. But next to the fire station, we actually have... Oh, it looks like they might have a fire museum at the fire station. Because here we have a vintage old call box. Ring it, let you know the fire department that there's a fire. I think if it happened at the fire station, they would know though. And we also have a vintage looking fire truck. See the ladder strapped to the side. But what's this we see? The town just doesn't have one bottle house. It has a second bottle house. Bottles used because you couldn't get that much wood to build houses. Mortar between them. House built of bottle, bottles. It's interesting that it looks like there was mortar put over the outside of these bottles to really seal it in. A lot of them, the bottles are exposed so light gets in. This one, they, they truthfully were just building materials. One of the historic things that happened in the cemetery, you see, there was a boxing match, the fight between Gans versus Nelson, September 3rd, 1906. It went 42 rounds. 42 rounds! That's a long boxing fight. This is Goldfield for a 20 year period prior to 1900, mining in, in Nevada fell into a slump that cast the entire state into a bleak depression and caused the loss of a third of the population. The picture grinded overnight following the spectacular strikes in Tonopah and 
shortly afterwards in Goldfield, gold ore was discovered here in December 1902 by two Nevada-born prospectors, Harry Stimler and Billy Marsh. Then from 1904 to 1918, it boomed the city and they had a railroad that connected Las Vegas and a peak pocu population of 20,000, making it Nevada's largest community at the time between 1903 and 1940. A total of... A total of 86,765,044 in precious metals were produced here. <laughs> So now we're driving to the cemetery and we just ran over those little like cattle rail things and I said, oh my gosh, it's donkeys. And there are a lot of donkeys. And we're on the side where we're with the donkeys and they know it. Look at that ears. You even have a baby with a mommy. I like it out west. Joshua trees and donkeys. Here. So the grave we're looking for, we drive all the way to the back of the cemetery to Elk's Rest, but we see this other distant cemetery to the left, which is part of the cemetery, and the grave we're looking for is over there. It's time to make it by foot. Look what I found, an awesome dehydrated bearded dragon. He's been mummified here out in the desert. We're gonna let him stay though. Now he looks real. People might walk by and think he was still alive. He was on his back when we found him. In front of us today, we have the grave of the unknown man who died eating library paste, July 14th, 1908. Just like, look at Lester Moore in the Boot Hill Cemetery of Tombstone. It might seem like a funny statement, but in all reality, really is heartbreaking. Back in 1908, it was reported in the town that they saw a vagrant wandering the streets. They saw him rummaging through the trash outside the local library. Now, it was believed, obviously, then, that when he was rummaging, the reason he was rummaging is he was starving to death. So here was this guy probably trying to make a living, traveling, working in these little towns, trying to make a living, who was starving to death. So in that trash by the library, he found some paste. And it would have tasted sweet because it was mostly flour and water, but it was also 60% alum. And that concentration, of course, was deadly. And it was his final demise. A lot of people at first thought, this can't be true. Look how new the tombstone is. I'm gonna say people probably come out here and repaint these every once in a while. And a report was made by actually by the doctor, Dr. Turner, who made his post-mortem examination of the body, said that the man died of starvation and eating the pace. He was already near death and died within hours of consumption. So figure, even if he didn't eat the paste, in the next few days, he would have died anyway from the starvation. It looks like someone does come around because these were chiseled and that someone just paints in where it was chiseled. It's interesting, with a lot of the graves you go to, we see a lot of tombstones that are regular, like granite. We see some wood crosses, but these literally were just chunks of stone, stood up a little bit of chiseling, made into the tombstones. And if we look closely, we actually have a lizard hanging out with the unknown man. And I guess a lot of people, because of the appetite, do come out to visit the unknown man because there's been a lot of mementos left at his grave, as we can see on top. From a bolt, to some coins, to a, even a marble. And I just have one question for you, Joy. What? In elementary school, in mm -hmm. kindergarten, did you eat the paste? No. I'd roll it up and play with it, but never eat it. I'm not going to say that I tried paste in kindergarten, but I'm also not going to deny it. I'm just glad if I did try it in kindergarten, that by that point they changed it and it wasn't poisonous and it wasn't toxic. And I was going to 
since it's not toxic when we were kids, I thought it'd be funny to bring a thing of Elmer's paste and eat some paste next to the man who died eating paste. But I didn't know. Did you know they stopped making Elmer's paste? You can't get paste for kids in school anymore. As we're looking out of the cemetery, it's unusual, the cemetery itself as well, because Goldsfield's first cemetery was located next to what would be the arena for the famous Gans Nelson boxing match and later the Las Vegas and Tonopah Railroad Depot. And it was originally built in June of 1904. And the cemetery we're standing on started on September 6, 1905 under the leadership of the Gold Miners Union and the Goldfield Union Cemetery Association was formed for the purpose of establishing a free and independent burial ground but those original people at that old cemetery, I don't remember who paid them. Was it locals? Was it the, the, the sheriff? But since the cemetery was right next to the railroad depot, when people would come to town, they saw the cemetery right there and didn't want to stay. So in the dark of night, they hired some vagrants to dig up the bodies and move them and place them respectfully in this cemetery to get rid of that cemetery. It's a weird story. And we just got in the car quickly and safely because we actually heard a rattlesnake rattling and we're like, we don't see you, we hear you. We're gonna step into our car because you can't bite us in there. All safe. All safe. It's interesting how the cemetery is also broken into parts. Like that was the Sacred Heart and back was the elk area in the far back of the cemetery. We have made our way to the International Car Forest of the Last Church. This is on private property, but it is welcome. Donations are welcomed. Enter at your own risk. We're about to enter. As you can see, we have a car stuck nose down in the ground. It looks like a lot of graffiti artists and taggers have been here. They don't encourage it, but they don't, they say if you do it, you do it more or less. One tip I would say is be careful with the car you come because uh, these are some roads, if you want to call them that. This car looks like the earth is slowly eating it. Giant piece of metal sticking out. Almost like it's a banner or something. Or a medieval knight taking his chariot. But 10 feet away, this car has sunk. Now, if you come to the National Car Forest, a few things. One, like I said, be careful of the hills. Two, you are out in the elements. Be aware of that. Three, the spot is massive and it's multi-layered. And it goes on for farther and farther than we realize. I'm looking in the distance and there's actually another car stuck in the ground over there. Joy says she sees two from here. Mm -hmm. But what we came here to say, if we take from the first car we were looking at, there is a bus standing straight up. I don't know how it's really holding there. There is a single piece of wood holding the bus. But then we look down into the valley and we noticed a lot of cars. The feel you get driving up that first hill is a big reveal. A lot of people might not know what to expect coming to the International Car Forest. First thing you see is this car and this bus. And you might think that's it. But then turn your head when you go to look at those. 
and you see paths with more bus, with more cars, stacked on top of each other, noses into the ground. Some with the rears into the ground. Now, Joy, do you feel safe standing in a bus that all we can see is being held in with a little dirt and a single piece of wood? No way. Then why are you standing underneath the bus? Get out from under there. I'll go in. What? I want to apologize now. As we look at these art cars, if there is any profanity, graffiti, I apologize. We do not mean to show it. I'm trying hard to not show what we see. But it is a lot of uh, spray paint. I wonder if every night it lights up. There's a bunch of Christmas lights connected from a pole to the next car we come to. This is pretty epic. You could hear almost nothing except there's a man working in the background. Got a ghost hanging out of an alien. This car looks like it was just dropped down because of the way the doors blew out when it impacted. Funny and ironic, live vegan, spray painted on the leather interior. A mural of Lone Ranger. We see the steer, but he actually has just the skull. This one looks like you could crawl under it. I wouldn't recommend crawling under it. There are rattlesnakes out here. Be careful around your surroundings. And you can see, this international car force doesn't discriminate. No, 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 we don't just have cars. We have some vans. We have some pickup trucks. We have school buses. All motor vehicles are welcome. Even a limo on top of a box truck. But Joy's pointing, because they really don't discriminate, do they, Joy? They don't. At all. We even have children's vehicles. This is so epic. And it fascinates me, you can see. A lot of people have different messages with their spray paint. Did you ever see broken glass blowing in the wind before? A tow truck's not even standing at an angle, it's almost standing. It's totally perpendicular to the ground. And the chains dangling that used to be used to tow cars really add to the effect. I'm gonna head up to the other bus, show some stuff. Joy's gonna hang back, photograph some of these cars. And the sun is bright, she might go sit in her car. But I'm like, I can't stop exploring this. This angle, it almost looks like the school bus is resting on the side of the car. The front of this key has been spray painted with two blue eyes making this vehicle look like it's seeing where it's going. It couldn't be like a car's car where the eyes are on the windshield. Nope, that just wouldn't have worked. Road RIP. That's one way to put it. This vehicle, I don't think it's going to see itself going down the highway anytime soon.
Did someone shoot Homer? It looks like he's bleeding. Another vehicle here has a plague doctor painted on it, El Doctor. But this one, out of all the vehicles, this one is my favorite. An old boxcar truck with the limousine parked on top of it. The message someone chose to leave on this car is freedom is always against the law. Model I live by. It's okay to be wild. Some of us actually have been born, born to be wild. Goldfield was and started as a gold mining town, but now it is filled with some odd and bizarre things. From graves from back then of the man who ate paste and died, to art cars, to the international car forest. Yeah. This spot is interesting. It is worth a journey to come see, I say. Make sure it's good weather, because if it's 110 degrees mm -hmm. out in the sun, you might not want to do it. Or I don't know how winters are in this part. We are at around 5,000 feet elevation. So uh, if it's bad weather in the winter, you don't want to come then either. But you do want to come. And uh, I would recommend it. Yep. But I think we've done everything there is to see, to do here. Mm -hmm. I think we call it. I think so. Goldfield. Been there, done that. Remember folks, safe travels. Good eats. And live life. You see it? It's a little baby chipmunk in the car. He's posing for us. Hello, cute little chipmunk. Spider burrow, spider burrow. Does anything a normal spider burrow can do. Remember folks, we've been traveling this country, filming everything. We have tons of videos on this channel, so just remember to watch everything. I know it says watch Earthlings, but it, I don't have spray paint to spray, spray paint, watch everything. I was hoping your eyes didn't pick it up. You're too quick, you're too quick. And just driving along, we have some more. Bye guys! <laughs>